En de Nederlandse regering, en dat vind ik dus een bloody shame... Uh, helpt mee een klimaat te creëren van demonisering van mijn persoon. En als mij straks wat gebeurt, dan zijn zij mede verantwoordelijk. En dan kunnen ze niet hun handen ervan aftrekken in de zin van... ja, ik heb uh, die aanslag niet gepleegd. Je hebt het klimaat meegecreëerd. This is the true story of a crime. That became world news on the 6th of May 2002. The victim, a political leader often ranked among the infamous European right-wing extremists. At your serve, your serve, your serve. The suspect, a radical left-wing man who had already gained a reputation as an environmental activist and as such was hated by many Dutch farmers. Er zijn inderdaad boeren die ons ook bedreigd hebben door middel van brieven. En uh, ik denk uh, dat uh, dit deze gang van zaken absoluut niet te tolereren valt. His murder weapon, a gun used mainly by the Spanish police. Monday, 6th of May 2002, around 3 p.m. Just an ordinary day, it seems. In the Netherlands, too, but appearances can be deceptive. That Monday afternoon, around 3 p.m., along one of Holland's motorways, a Daimler is being driven. Inside the luxurious car, a politician, Pim Fortown, and his chauffeur, they are on their way to the National Media Park in Hilversum, the center of Dutch radio and TV. For town is scheduled to give a live radio interview there at 4 p.m. In just a few months, Pim Fortown has single-handedly managed to create a political landslide, not only in the Netherlands but throughout Europe. He is tipped to win the parliamentary elections that are due to take place the following week. This newspaper quotes Pim Fortown saying, we are heading for an electoral revolution. Fortown will be prime minister. He has predicted it himself. Fortown is confident, enjoying his unprecedented popularity to the full. Monday, 6th of May 2002, around 3 p.m. At the same time, on another motorway, another car is being driven to the media park. It is a red Toyota Starlet. The driver is an unknown young man. Next to him are some papers, including a map of the broadcast center. He is also heading for the media park. Just before 3.30 p.m., he parks his car exactly here, in this street, less than a kilometer away from the radio studio where Pim Fortown is to give his interview between 4 and 6 p.m. The young man is aware of this interview. The time and the presenter's name are jotted down on the map. 3.50 p.m., 20 minutes later, Pim Fortown arrives at the radio studio. The chauffeur parks the Daimler here, just a few minutes before the live show is due to start. Pim is in a hurry. 
It has never been ascertained where the driver of the red Toyota was at this point. He may have been lurking somewhere near the studio. This is an excerpt of the actual interview for Town Cave. How old will you be, actually? Daar ga ik niet over, maar ik, toen ik een jaar of 14, 15 was... had ik al het idee, ik word een jaar of 86, 87. En dat is echt nooit meer uit mijn hoofd gegaan. Niet. Dus de gevoelsleeftijd, om het maar zo te zeggen. En mijn, oude, mijn moeder is bijna 85 geworden, mijn vader 87. Dus het zou kunnen. Two hours later, the interview has come to an end... and Pim leaves the studio. Accompanied by a few radio employees and political colleagues. 6.06 p.m. A young man appears in the car park and fires six bullets from close range. Five hit their target. The gunman runs off. Pim Four Town collapses and dies on the spot shortly afterwards. The man who was on the verge of coming to power in the Netherlands and changing Europe with his new controversial ideas has been assassinated. Pim Town was born in this small seaside village, Velsen, shortly after the Second World War, on the 19th of February, 1948. He grew up in a conservative Roman Catholic environment. He remained true to his faith to the end, his funeral mass. However, as an adult, Town was anything but conservative. At the age of 23, he graduated as a sociologist, followed nine years later by a PhD in social sciences. In 1992, ten years before his death, he set up his own consultants agency and became a very well-known figure. He was different in many ways. He was open about his desire for fame and a glamorous lifestyle and about his homosexuality. I can nowadays so much out. That we have last Saturday, gelukkig wel gekund. Vond ik heel leuk. Oh, where were you geweest? In Rotterdam hebben wij wat. Leuk. Een leuke homoseksuele subcultuur. Nou ja, daar ben ik in de clubs geweest. Krijg je dan ook meer aandacht van van leukere leukere jongens? Beeld schone jonge mannen. Nee, ik had even gebeld met een van de eigenaren van de cafés waar ik veel kom, ja. die, daar ben ik goed mee bevriend. Ik zeg, nou, ik, ik wil graag komen, vind je het goed? Hè? Want ja, je wil ook de orde niet verstoren. <laughs> nou, die had een leuk groepje voor mij georganiseerd. Dus nee, dat is leuk. Dat is leuk. He was voted the best dressed man in Holland... and could always be relied on to make controversial remarks in the media. Nou, natuurlijk de dood van uh, Gianni... Uh, This is an excerpt from 1997... when he was asked to comment on the murder of Italian fashion king Versace... A remarkable interview when placed in the perspective of his own assassination. For the family is natuurlijk zeer tragisch, maar als wereldnieuws vind ik het geen tragisch nieuws. But for town gained most of his publicity with his sharp political analysis, his criticism, and his creative proposals, which always led to heated discussions. Asked about his views on ethnic minorities. Town stated. Het is ook een tijdbom uh, die op den duur hele grote problemen, niet alleen in Nederland, nee. maar ook, ook in landen als Frankrijk en Duitsland uh, zal geven. En met name als we er niet in slagen om op korte termijn mensen van vreemde herkomst goed te integreren in de Nederlandse samenleving. He wrote many books bearing titles as To the People of Holland and the Islamization of Our Culture. On the 20th of August, he announced he wanted to go into politics. This was the beginning of a nine-month triumphal procession. We willen wel openheid. En we willen wel het land teruggeven aan de mensen in het land. Ik heb er zin aan. At your service. But as well as making many friends, he also made many enemies. Dit is niet gewoon rechts. Dit is extreem rechts. For town despised the monarchy, so sacrosanct in Holland, and said the following about Queen Beatrix. 
She lectures us about solidarity. That woman in her beautiful state-funded palaces with her luxurious lifestyle and her tax freedom, why doesn't she set an example? For town wanted to abolish the army and the air force. We should incorporate all the armed forces into the navy. That would make things more transparent, easier to control, and it would be cheaper too. His most controversial remarks were about the ethnic minorities and asylum seekers. In short, the immigration issue. We should get rid of the Moroccan, Turkish and Suriname neighborhoods in the big cities. These people should be forced to move to smaller towns. Morally speaking, the Christians of Holland have more rights than Islamic newcomers because for centuries, Christians have contributed to the rise of our country. And if it were up to me, I wouldn't let another single Muslim into this country. For town was brave enough to speak the minds of the people, and his political star rose very quickly. Everything indicated that during the elections on the 15th of May, his party, with his name, the list Pim for Town or LPF, would indeed come to power. Nou, ik denk niet dat ik veel achter mijn bureau zal zitten als minister-president. Want het wordt toch erg veel wat de Engelsen noemen management by speech. Als je dat land wil veranderen, dan moet je mensen motiveren. En dan moet ik in dat land zijn. En dat heeft helemaal geen zin om daar uh, alsmaar in Den Haag te zitten. At all costs, Pim wanted to become prime minister of Holland. Vergis je niet. Ik word de minister-president van dit land. He knew how to manipulate the media better than anyone. His eloquence and extraordinary charisma gave him the status of a savior. His political opponents, however, especially the left-wing parties, regularly labeled this rising star as dangerous and his views as far right. For town wanted to drastically curb the number of asylum seekers. When he went further by expressing his doubts about the discrimination ban in the Constitution, the established political order was incensed. Vanochtend, in een kranteninterview, heeft Pim Fortuyn laten zien wat hij wil. Het masker afgeworpen. Een land waar mensen met een bepaald geloof, een zekere cultuur, een andere achtergrond, gediscrimineerd mogen worden. Hij wil daartoe artikel 1 van onze grondwet schrappen. Dat is het fundament van onze rechtsstaat. Dat de integriteit van iedereen beschermt. Hij weet wat hij wil. Ik weet waar wij tegen vechten. Met zijn pleidooi de grenzen te sluiten, overschrijdt hij een grens. Het discriminatieverbod afschaffen gaat zo mogelijk nog verder. Het is de bijl aan de wortel van de grondwet en de beschaving. Dit is niet gewoon rechts, dit is extreem rechts. Hij gaat hier een grens over die je niet mag passeren. Nederland wordt wakker. Het is uh, een ernstige mate uh, dus twee dracht zaaien. Door de ene uh, groep van de bevolking bang te maken... of uh, onrustgevoelens, die er toch misschien al zijn... verder aan te wakkeren onder de verwijzing en naar het feit dat er van de andere soort te veel zijn. In onze cultuur is individuele verantwoordelijkheid gaat boven collectieve verantwoordelijkheid. We hebben een scheiding van kerk en staat. We willen gelijkwaardigheid van mannen en vrouwen. We willen gelijkwaardigheid van homoseksuele mensen en andere minderheden. We zijn voor vrijheid van meningsuiting en voor een ontwikkelde democratie en een ontwikkelde rechtsstaat. Nou, met de uh, islamitische agrarische cultuur is overal in de wereld op deze punten worden andere stellingen betrokken. En dat maakt het ook voor mensen die hier naartoe komen met zo'n culturele achtergrond ook zo moeilijk om te integreren in uh, nou ja, de moderne Nederlandse samenleving. Nou, dat is het enige wat ik heb gezegd. But it didn't stop at a verbal war between politicians. Oh, 
On the 14th of March, during a book presentation, angry left-wing activists spelled for town with cakes filled with feces, urine and vomit. Het deed geen pijn, maar het is a, a heel vernederend. En B, het kwam na, dat, kijk, dat zie je niet op televisie. Als je ziet wat ik af en toe in de brievenbus krijg, dat, dat, he, dus aan bedreigingen en zo, daar word je niet vrolijk van. The increasing popularity of Pim for Town does not go unnoticed internationally. Comparisons are easily made between him and the notorious exponents of detestable ultra-right-wing ideals. Ces positions anti-migration le font comparer à Jean-Marie Le Pen. Toen is er in de internationale pers een beeld ontstaan dat hier een soort Haider of Le Pen was opgestaan. En ja, dat is heel negatief uh, voor Nederland in het buitenland. En dat probeer ik nu recht te zetten, ja. He refuses to be compared to Pierre Kiersgaard from Denmark, Philip de Winter from Belgium, Umberto Bossi from Italy, much maligned Jean-Marie Le Pen from France and Austrian Jorg Heide, all ultra-right politicians. Ik word er dus doodziek van als ik voortdurend... Maar, nou, dat gebeurde niet met de Nederlandse pers, want daar hebben we nu die, die, die hobbel gehad. Maar als ik voortdurend maar mij moet verantwoorden over wat meneer Le Pen... of meneer Heide of meneer, bij u in uw land meneer De Winter doet... ik heb met die mensen nog nooit contact gehad. Ik heb een heel ander politiek programma. Ja, dan denk ik, wat moet ik daarmee? On the 7th of April, a month before his death, Fortown calls an international press meeting in order to clarify his alleged extremist views. That day, he predicts a series of conservative election victories in Germany, England and France in the wake of his own expected triumph. And that will be a wonderful good coalition in Europe. And so it's going to be a, fa- a, a very good coalition in Europe later Helemaal on. Helemaal, als ik de verkiezingen win especially, en premier van Nederland word. Especially should I win the elections and become Prime Minister of Holland. But whatever Fortown does, however he defends himself, his success and his theories are still regarded as reprehensible in certain circles. As the election approaches, the battle between Fortown and his visible enemies becomes increasingly fierce. What I merk bij jou in het debat dat is dat op het moment dat jij bekritiseerd wordt op je kwetsbare punten, dat je theater maakt en dat je niet inhoudelijk reageert. En daar zit jouw zwakte. But worse still, Fortown even receives anonymous death threats from his invisible enemies. De Nederlandse regering, en dat vind ik dus een bloody shame... Eh, helpt mee een klimaat te creëren van demonisering van mijn persoon. En als mij straks wat gebeurt, dan zijn zij mede verantwoordelijk. En dan kunnen ze niet hun handen ervan aftrekken in de zin van... ja, ik heb eh, die aanslag niet gepleegd. Je hebt het klimaat meegecreëerd. The assassination of Dutch politician Pim Fortown also sends shockwaves abroad. Good evening. Holland's leading right-wing politician was assassinated today. In the Netherlands is the right populist Pim Fortuyn erschossen worden. Dieses Attentat ist ein schwerer Schlag für die Werte der Demokratie. In Hilversum gab am Abend ein Unbekannter mehrere Schüsse auf den Rechtspopulisten Pim Fortuyn ab. Volgens noch unbevestigte Berichte zou hij overleden zijn. Holland mourns. The murder of Pim Fortuyn becomes front page news all over the world. The press reports on the feelings of disbelief anger and intense grief of the Dutch people. That same night, riots break out around the Dutch Parliament in The Hague. The population is enraged. Their Pim has been murdered. The first politician who, in their eyes, finally dared speak the minds of ordinary people. (laughs) 
A democracy is in shock. Via a TV broadcast, the Prime Minister urges the nation to stay calm. Laten we in godsnaam onze kalmte bewaren. Laten we onze kalmte bewaren in een tijd waarin je geneigd bent heel woest te zijn, heel boos te zijn. Maar kalmte is misschien wel de beste dienst die we nu in waardigheid aan onze rechtsstaat en aan onze democratie en aan de nagedachtenis van Pim Fortuyn kunnen geven. But people have had enough of the political establishment, who many hold partly responsible for the murder of the man who should have become their new leader. Because people felt that despite earlier incidents and many threats, the government didn't provide Pim for town with adequate protection. It is dangerous for me, uh, without security in the big cities, uh, to walk on the street. A lot of people felt that he was demonized as a dangerous extreme right monster, and that leading politicians actually put his life in danger. Pim Fortown had a vision, and was open and honest about what he thought was wrong with the world. He made use of the democratic freedom of speech in a very flamboyant way. And that was what killed him. Nearly everyone is convinced of that. Omdat men in Nederland niet wenst te spreken over uh, landen van herkomst en sociale problemen die daarmee samenhangen. En meten is weten. Je moet eerst weten hoe het in elkaar zit, het probleem. Pim Fortown gains iconic status in the days following his violent death. He is glorified in a similar way to Princess Diana. The murder is quickly placed in an international context and comparisons are made with leading figures from world history, such as Olaf Palmer, Sweden, 1986. Indira Gandhi, India, 1984. Aldo Moro, Italy, 1978. Luis Carrero Blanco, Spain, 1973, and Martin Luther King, the USA, 1968. I have a dream. But the name that's mentioned most frequently is the name of the man who was assassinated almost four decades ago in Dallas, Texas, John F. Kennedy, the American president who, ironically enough, for town often quoted and called his major role model. Ook oh, Kennedy door, dit is heel belangrijk voor alle mensen van mijn leeftijd geweest. Wij werden opgevoed in de jaren 50 en toen ging het net een beetje kantelen. Er is wat, zeg maar wat, de ramen werden wat opengezet en die man die verwoordde dat zo prachtig. During a conversation with a confidant, Pim once said... My mother always had a Kennedy-like vision of me. She was afraid that I'd be shot dead too. Now that I've entered politics... I'm glad she's passed on. For town wanted to be to the Dutch what Kennedy had been to the people of the United States. Their own charismatic, innovative, democratically elected leader. But both men were prematurely silenced by bullets. And just as in Kennedy's case, the murder of Fortown raises important questions. Was the shooting the crazy act of one man? Or was there a bigger political conspiracy? Why was Pim Fortown shot? Will the true facts ever come to light? Or will they be hidden away forever? There is another similarity. As in the Kennedy case, a completely unknown young man was arrested shortly after Fortown's death, who, 
according to the judicial authorities, is undoubtedly the assassin. 6th of May, 2002, 6.06 p.m. The young man appears. He's carrying a blue plastic bag and a gun in his right hand. He's wearing sunglasses and a blue baseball cap. For town is hit by five bullets to his head, his larynx, his carotid artery, his heart and lung. He collapses. The chauffeur jumps out of the Daimler. Bystanders take cover. The gunman runs towards the entrance barrier of the radio studio with the chauffeur in pursuit. Whilst running, the chauffeur calls the emergency number. The gunman points his gun at him twice, threatening to shoot, but doesn't. The chauffeur meets a TV station employee who has just seen someone trying to run inconspicuously towards a narrow path between the media park and the main road. This man joins in the chase. Several witnesses also call the emergency number. Initially, they think it's a prank. Meanwhile, the chauffeur describes to the emergency staff the route they are taking. The gunman runs, hesitates by his parked Toyota, but continues running towards the Texaco petrol station. Three police cars arrive, following the chauffeur's directions. They have police dogs with them. The gunman is overpowered by four policemen at the petrol station. It is 6.11 p.m., five minutes after the attack. He is immediately taken to the police station in Hilversum. That's where he states his name, Volkert van der Graaf. He states his address, an ordinary house in Hardewijk, a town in the center of Holland. At the police station, he also states the name of the law firm he wants to represent him. And that is all that the murderer, who was practically caught red-handed, says. Who is this unknown 32-year-old Volkert van der Graaf? Volkert van der Graaf was born on the 9th of July, 1969, in the coastal province of Zeeland. People who knew him when he was a young boy say he was shy, remarkably inconspicuous and hot-tempered. Volkert grew up in this street. He was an idealist from an early age. Long before the murder of Pin Fortein, the website of Animal Freedom, a British animal rights organization, published a kind of autobiography of Volkert, in which he says the following about his childhood. Even in elementary school, I was interested in animals, the environment, and nature. We did things like picking up garbage in the dunes, and I also used to fish with my brother. My brother put the worms on the hook. I thought it was mean on the worms and the fish. It just wasn't right, but apparently everyone thought it was normal. During my high school years, this feeling that something was not right increased. People think it normal that you eat animals and that you let fish suffocate in nets. I worked at a bird shelter. Only 2% of the birds that were brought in, covered in oil, survived. I wanted to prevent suffering. Such things shouldn't be happening in a civilized country, I thought. But there's no one to stand up for them. At one point, I wanted to stop eating meat. But my parents wouldn't let me because you had to eat meat. In 1987, 18-year-old Volkert becomes an environmental hygiene student in Wageningen a small student town known for the many idealists who go there to make the world a better place. Then I became a vegan. During my studies, I involved myself in the use of laboratory animals. We fought for the right not to have to use test animals in our studies. I've been involved in several actions. 
Volkert eventually drops out of college and becomes an activist. He continues to live and work in Wageningen. From 1994 until the murder of Fortown, he worked for the Environment Offensive Association. Environment Offensive is involved in the environment as well as animal welfare. We work together towards stopping the expansion of factory farming. The result is less pollution of the environment and less animal suffering. Through legal procedures, we fight permits for factory farming and fur farms, using the law as our tool. Vraag aan de hinderwetsvergunning aan. Uh, wat wij doen is het systematisch controleren van deze aanvragen. Wij gaan dus na of deze aanvragen voldoen aan de wettelijke regels. Wanneer daar niet aan voldaan wordt, tekenen wij bezwaar aan en eventueel beroep bij de Raad van State. Volkert's actions drew the anger of the farmers. Er zijn inderdaad boeren die ons ook bedreigd hebben door middel van brieven. En uh, ik denk uh, dat. Uh, dit, deze gang van zaken absoluut niet te tolereren valt. Dat ze op deze manier hun zin proberen te halen. A few months before the murder of Pim Fortown, there are lots of changes in Volkert's personal life. Five months earlier, he became a father and leaves Wageningen to move in with his girlfriend and his newborn daughter in a town some 60 kilometers away. His colleagues at the Environment Offensive say he was showing obvious signs of stress. 6th of May 2002. Like any other day, Volkert van der Graaf goes to work in Wageningen in his red Toyota Starlet. Around lunchtime, he goes to a shopping center. At 12.50 p.m., he buys a few stamps for a letter of protest from the environmental offensive, which he then posts. Then he drives to a nearby village, where he buys a brawn electric razor at an electrical appliance store as the receipt found later shows. Somewhere between 2.30 and 3.30 p.m., he drives to Hilversum. He parks his car in this street, close to number 45. At 6.06 p.m., he appears at the nearby media park and kills Pim Fortown. Five minutes later, he is arrested. Ever since, all kinds of incidents have confirmed that Volkert is more than just a run-of-the-mill suspect. He is a confident radical left-wing activist who knows exactly what his rights are and believes they should be respected. On the 6th of May, he asks a progressive team of lawyers to represent him. The team includes Britta Buhler, who acquired an international reputation by representing the PKK terrorist leader, Oshalan. On the 24th of June, a number of suspicious chemicals are found, including a time power unit in a plastic container in Volkert's garage. It contains bottles of hydrochloric and sulfuric acid and condoms filled with sugar and potassium chloride. According to the Dutch Forensic Institute, the only commonly known use of this mixture is to make an explosive. When sulfuric acid is added, a spontaneous explosion occurs. Was Volkert van der Graaf also preparing other attacks? On the 12th of July, over two months after the murder, the suspect goes on hunger strike at this prison facility in Amsterdam. He may have been inspired by the renowned animal rights activist, the Englishman Barry Horn, who died on the 5th of November 2001 in prison as a result of a hunger strike. Horn, married and a father of two, was protesting against animal testing, which he condemned but this is not the case with Volkert van der Graaf. Volkert's hunger strike is a protest against his own treatment in prison. His cell is under 24-hour camera surveillance as a suicide prevention precaution. On day 29 of his hunger strike, one of his lawyers says, Hongerstaking is geen chantage middel. Zij is gestart omdat Volkert voor zichzelf de conclusie heeft getrokken dat de omstandigheden waaronder hij is gedetineerd 
hem geen enkele menselijke waardigheid en kwaliteit van leven meer laten... omdat een dergelijk bestaan voor hem geen zin heeft. Niet één verdachte in Nederland, ook niet zij die eveneens van ernstige misdrijven worden verdacht... heeft met vergelijkbare omstandigheden te maken. On day 70, Volkert suddenly ends his hunger strike. It's unclear why, since 24-hour camera surveillance is still being maintained. For towns next of kin call him a coward, but they express the hope that he will now finally talk, because the moment the fanatical self-assured activist was arrested, he has not uttered a word. He refuses to tell the police and the authorities why he murdered Pim for Town, and that still remains the big mystery. Volkert van der Graaf once stated, My actions don't come so much from love for animals, I just act rationally. What happens to animals in factory farming is not right. Protecting animals is civilizing people. It's a well-known fact that Pim Fort Town supported fur farms. Furthermore, he indirectly put Volkert's adversaries, the Christian farmers of central Holland, on a pedestal. For Town once said the following, Morally speaking, the Christians of Holland have more rights than Islamic newcomers because for centuries, Christians have contributed to the rise of our country. Did Volkert van der Graaf hold a personal grudge against Pim Fort Town? Or was the murder a symbolic act against the soon-to-be most powerful man in a civilized society, which, according to Volkert, is far from civilized? Was it the act of one man or a conspiracy? There is a widespread national anger about the fact that the authorities failed to provide for town with any personal protection, despite the numerous serious threats he received in the mail. The Dutch government has set up a special commission of inquiry to investigate the facts regarding Fort Town's security. But people fear that the truly important facts will, as in the JFK murder, be swept under the carpet. Furthermore, lots of people have virtually no faith in the actual murder investigation, which is obviously in the hands of the public prosecutor and the police. But is this justified? There is no evidence of an accomplice or of a contract killing, and Volkert's amateurist modus operandi does suggest it was a solo act. Thanks to the murderer's carelessness and the state-of-the-art technology of the Dutch Forensic Institute, there is so much evidence against Volkert van der Graaf that the authorities are 100% certain. No one else could have committed the premeditated murder of Pim Fort Town but van der Graaf. After looking closely at Volkert's computer, it appears that in the weeks prior to the murder, the name Pim for Town was searched for on the internet for hours. The evening before the murder being the last time. Immediately after the murder of Fort Town, the police start an investigation bringing up overwhelming evidence proving Volkert van der Graaf to be the assassin. Inside his car, the police find maps of the area of Rotterdam where Fort Town lived and of the media park in Hilversum. On the map, a handwritten note says between 4 and 6 and 6th of May, rudeville.nl. In other words, the time and date of the live interview and the name of the radio show. Conclusion, according to the public prosecutor, Fort Town's murder was premeditated. And there is more evidence to prove that Van der Graaf is the killer of Pim Fort Town. Besides Fort Town's chauffeur and the passerby mentioned earlier, a third person pursued the gunman after the murder up until his arrest. The description of the gunman given by various people who witnessed the murder coincides with the description of Volkert van der Graaf when he was arrested. Conclusion. According to the judicial authorities, the gunman and Volkert are one and the same man. Volkert was wearing latex gloves. 
The Dutch Forensic Institute found 1,200 gunshot traces on these gloves and on the sleeves of his jacket. Furthermore, at the time of his arrest, Volkert had a loaded Firestar gun in his pocket with a cocked hammer. It is highly likely that the cartridge cases found at the scene of the crime come from this weapon, a 9mm caliber Firestar pistol. Two boxes of identical 9mm cartridges, so-called Luger bullets, were found at Volkert's home during a house search. One box was full and contained 25 bullets. The other box contained just 18 bullets. And that tallies with the six bullets that were fired into Four Town, plus the one remaining bullet that was found in Volkert's Firestar gun. Conclusion. According to the judicial authorities, Volkert's Firestar was the weapon that was used to kill Four Town. Cell tissue found on Volkert's left trouser leg matches Pim Fortown's DNA profile. The victim's blood was even found on the weapon. This horrific fact is final proof, according to the authorities. The DNA study shows another remarkable fact. Other cell tissue found on the cartridge clip doesn't match the killer's or the victim's DNA. But it does match DNA found at another crime a property crime, committed five months prior to the murder of Four Town. The authorities refuse to reveal the identity of the person involved because of the ongoing investigation. The origin of the gun is still a mystery, but there are other remarkable facts about Volkert's weapon. A Firestar model of the make Star. What is striking is that experts call this weapon the larder amongst guns. It's a cheap, unsound, unreliable weapon that hasn't been on the market for some time. It cost around 250 euros a few years ago. The weapon used to be manufactured by the Spanish company Star Bonifacio Echevarria. It went bankrupt in 1997. So, who uses these cheap, unreliable guns? An internet search shows that of all people, the Spanish police, the Guardia Civil, bought 2,600 Firestar holsters in 1995. This is an official state document, published on the 20th of October 1995, under the heading, Announcements of the Ministry of the Interior. It says, Resolution of the Director General of the Guardia Civil announcing the open invitation to tender for the purchase of 2,600 pistol holsters for the Star Model Firestar Plus under the terms stated. There are also indications that members of the Basque terrorist organization ATA also own Firestars. However, there is no evidence as yet of any links between the Firestars belonging to the Guardia Civil and the ATA and Volkert's Firestar. However, the authorities say that the investigations have shown that Volkert's Firestar was legally supplied to a Belgian weapons dealer. According to firearms experts, the fact that Volkert used a Firestar is true evidence of his amateurism. A professional hitman would never have used this kind of inferior gun in a liquidation. It is more typical of an opportunistic crime, and there is more proof of that. Otherwise, Van der Graaf wouldn't have driven his own car to the media park. He would not have left any incriminating evidence in his car. He would not have kept the remaining ammunition at his home. He would not have had the murder weapon in his pocket when he was arrested. He would have chosen a better escape route. However, experts also say that he must have practiced with the Firestar gun. After all, a person firing a gun for the first time is unlikely to hit the target five consecutive times because of the gun's recoil. Not even if that person is firing at point-blank range. And Volkert didn't have a gun license. In the trial of the century, as the criminal case against Volkert van der Graaf is dubbed in Holland, 
He will most certainly be found guilty of the horrific murder of Pim Fortown. The media is openly talking about a life sentence. On the 6th of May 2002, Pim Fortown was murdered. The Dutch nation was seized by grief, anger and dismay. A democracy in shock. In the eyes of a number of European leaders, politicians and journalists, he was a far-right populist. In the eyes of many Dutch people, he was their new charismatic leader and the voice of the common, hard-working, but voiceless folk. That same week, his funeral took place amid overwhelming public interest. Impressive applause resounded during his last journey in Holland. Members of the cabinet and even the prime minister attended the impressive funeral service where Pim's brother spoke. Pim, we are trots on you. Fire your Go with God. Some days later, Pim Four Town achieved a posthumous landslide victory during the Dutch parliamentary elections. We gaan of Nederland veranderen en dan krijg ik een fors mandaat van de Nederlandse kiezer. Of ik krijg het niet, ja, dan moet je het maar uitzoeken met de partij van. He was not, however, given the chance to prove whether he could keep his promises as a democratic politician or not. Ciao. Het was een lange dag. Two months later, on the 17th of July, Pim Fortown was buried here, in his second home country, Italy. It was here that his family bid a final farewell. The show is over. To the man who, within six months, completely changed the face of national and European politics. Thanks to his insights. Yeah, Captain, uh sterk voorspellend vermogen. Dat is niet iets van, van daarboven. Maar het is op een, als je op een bepaalde manier kunt kijken... en dat kan ik, hè, dat is een talent... dan zie je ontwikkelingen sneller aankomen dan ander... omdat je op andere dingen let. Thanks to his charisma and humor. Ik ga het handtasje lenen van Margaret Thatcher. So I'm going to borrow Margaret Thatcher's handbag. En ik zal slaan op de tafel. I'm going to bang it on the table. And I, I'll say I want my money back. And thanks to his strong views. We willen gelijkwaardigheid van homoseksuele mensen en andere minderheden. We zijn voor vrijheid van meningsuiting en voor een ontwikkelde democratie en een ontwikkelde rechtsstaat. Nou, met de uh, islamitisch agrarische cultuur is overal in de wereld op deze punten worden andere stellingen betrokken. Five lethal bullets ended the life of Pim Fortuyn and his personal idealism. But that's not all. The bullets also put an end to Volkert van der Graaf, the assassin, according to the authorities, and his personal idealism. Ultimately, the only purpose that these five bullets served is to renew awareness that freedom of speech 
is one of the most important cornerstones of a civilized, modern democracy, and that this freedom should always be protected. At your serve, your serve, your serve, your serve.